Yeah, shalom and welcome to our pre-Rosh Hashanah live cooking demo. Uh, my name is Emma Goldblatt and I'm the program manager here at Shemayim Jewish Animal Advocacy. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Shemayim is a nonprofit organization that offers programs, campaigns, and educational opportunities to teach the Jewish community about animal advocacy and veganism. Uh, we run programs such as the Synagogue Vegan Challenge, Shemayim Campus Fellowship, and Vegan vs. Meat Debate. We share online content, including blogs, podcast episodes like this one, and news for those in the Jewish community to stay informed about matters related to uh, animals and veganism. Additionally, we partner with other Jewish uh, animal advocacy leaders and organizations to work towards the mission of reducing the suffering of all animals. And you can learn more at shemayim.us. As we gather to celebrate the Jewish New Year, it's a time of deep reflection, hope, and new beginnings. Uh, this holiday season, we not only rededicate ourselves to our faith and traditions, but also to the mission of creating a more just, compassionate, and equitable world for all living beings. Rosh Hashanah marks the anniversary of the creation of Adam and Eve, the first moment of dialogue between God and humanity. In that very first conversation, God gave us guidance on how to live harmoniously with the earth, saying, Behold, I have given you every herb yielding seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree that has seed yielding fruit to you, it shall be for food. From the beginning, we were told to eat plants. Uh, today, we have the opportunity to bring this, me this message into our kitchens, connecting our holiday celebrations with values of compassion and sustainability. Together, we'll explore just one example of a delicious plant-based dish that honors our traditions while also embracing new ways to celebrate uh, the abundance of our earth. This year, as we prepare to make some classic Rosh Hashanah favorites, uh, as well as the new, we'll reflect on how we can nourish not just our bodies, but also our spirits and the world around us. Uh, if you'd like to dive deeper into the high holidays and their connection to animal welfare, along with uh, plenty of other recipes and more, you should be on the lookout for the launch of our 2024 High Holiday Guide, which will be coming out in two days on September 18th. It's a great resource for learning about how uh, we can make these sacred times even more meaningful by aligning our traditions with our values of kindness and care for all living creatures. Uh, additionally, if you'd like to further your pledge of compassion for a happier, healthier, and more just planet this year, you might consider becoming a Shemaya member. You can choose between monthly and yearly payment options, and you can learn more at shemayam.us slash member. I'll make sure to put that link here briefly. And uh, yeah, let's get cooking and start the new year on a sweet, mindful, and compassionate note. With that, I'd like to introduce you to our speaker today, Debbie Adler. Uh, Debbie Adler is the founder and CEO of Sweet Debbie's, a vegan, gluten-free, sugar-free, and oil-free granola company. She is also the author of several acclaimed cookbooks, including Sweet Debbie's Organic Treats, Allergy-Free and Vegan Recipes, from the famous Los Angeles Bakery, Sweet, Savory, and Free, and The Mediterranean Plate. Her first cookbook was recognized by Delicious Living and Gluten-Free and More magazines, as well as Green Vegan Living. Debbie has appeared on NBC Nightly News, ABC7, CBS Los Angeles, KTLA, Wish TV, WGN, and Fox 7. She's been featured in the Los Angeles Times and NPR's Here and Now, her recipes have been published in magazines such as Allergic Living, Simply Gluten-Free, Pilates Style, and Low Sugar Living, and on popular websites like Fox News Magazine, Parent, Self, and The Kitchen. And for more info, uh, you can visit SweetDebbies.com. I will also put the link in here briefly. Um, but yeah, with that, uh, Debbie, take it away. Thank you, Emma. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. I'm going to show you how to make my Moroccan stuffed cabbage. It's a beautiful dish for the holidays or uh, just any time you wanna make it. So, but I, I thought this was kind of a festive dish for Rosh Hashanah because it's sweet and uh, we, we all want a sweet new year. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna get started and start showing you how to make it. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to core the cabbage. Uh, we want to keep it whole. I know a lot of times people will cut it in half and then core it. That's the easier way. But, you know, Jews like to make things harder for themselves. So, um, but there's another reason. Um, you want the whole leaf because that's easier to roll when you stuff it. So we want to keep it intact. So it's going to, this is actually the hardest part of the... <laughs> 
entire recipe is pouring the the cabbage. So um, you just want to take the this part. I don't know if you you can see this is that core, that stubborn core that you just want to go around around uh, sort of like you're trying to get out a plug and just go around it until it pops out. And that's the plug that we want removed. And then we're going to put it in a pot of boiling water and we're going to let it simmer for about 10 minutes. And what happens is magically the leaves of the cabbage start to fall away. See, it's a, it's a very cooperative cruciferous. So it does our work for us. So look at that. It's very easy. That part, it makes it easy for us. And so we can get started now that we have magically boiled our cabbage. We're going to start with the filling. So I'm going to show you what to do. We're going to start with a shallot. I'm just going to move my stuff over a little bit so you can see it better in the camera. Let's see if you can see what I'm doing here. And, uh, you know, I'll just show you a few skills as we go, just so you can get the full range of, um, you know, education while we're here. So this is a shallot. I don't use onions very much. I just like shallots. That's just my preference, but you can use an onion if you have them rather than shallots. It's, it's the same thing, basically. So, um, you know, you first want to cut the stems off like that. So we're going to peel it and the end. Now, not too much in from the end because I will tell you why in a second, but we just at this point want to be able to peel this off because we're going to do a mint. We're going to mince this up. And the reason why you don't want to cut too much off is you want this to hold it together as you're slicing it. So I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to go into it. If you can see, let's see if you can see me. Um, so you're going to hold the knife like you're shaking someone's hand, not like this, uh, like this. And you're going to hold it like a claw. And you're going to guide your knife as you go along. So as you can see, I'm guiding my knife like that. And we're doing very thin slices. And then we're going to do a half turn. And, and then we're just going to go like that for a, for a thin mince. And you wanna keep your knife sort of touching the board sort of like a go around like a choo-choo train and then you'll have less accidents <laughs> okay and then we're going to just put that into our pan I'm just gonna put on the heat here okay here we go and then as you know in plant-based cooking if I start to cry you'll know that it's <laughs> <laughs> the shallot. Okay, my eyes are cheering up. As you know, in plant-based cooking, we don't use oil. That's why I am not using oil. I am going to use coconut aminos. Now I use coconut aminos instead of soy sauce because it's a little less in sodium. It's about a third less in sodium. Coconut aminos are the coconut sap, like the nectar from the coconut sap. So it's very, very, um, it, you know, it has like a umami taste. That's it's very delicious. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use that instead of oil, and it also gives it obviously it gives it a little salty flavor without adding too much sodium. And we're just gonna mix that up and saute that. Then we're going to use our mushrooms here. I have some chopped up but I'm going to do the rest in front of you because I want to show you something uh, that you may not know. I do things very differently than most people. Um, first, you want to clean your mushroom. Don't rinse because it's going to get absorbed in the mushroom and you'll have a bloated mushroom. We don't want bloated mushrooms. Um, and what you want to do is you want to take off the stem, but you want to keep it. The stem 
has a lot of prebiotics in it, as well as minerals and vitamins. And when you throw it away, you're throwing away a lot of good stuff for your body. Prebiotics helps with gut health, helps with immunity. And uh, the cap has different vitamins and minerals than the stem. So you want to get them both. So it's like a, a combination. You need both to get the full range of benefit from your mushroom. Uh, in the recipe, I said cremini. I couldn't find cremini. So this is a shiitake. Doesn't matter. Whatever mushroom works for you. And so the same thing um, in terms of knife skills, you just want to thinly slice the stem and go horizontal, go vertical, and then just throw it in with the shallots. Again, we're going to slice across. That's really interesting about the, including the stem. I never knew that. See that? Emma, you learn from me <laughs> every time. I'm just full of knowledge. Okay. Those are our mushrooms. Okay. And then I'm just going to add in the rest. I did that beforehand. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to use oats. Um, you like in my book that this is from it's from the sweet savory and free book i say quinoa flakes since that since i wrote that book in 2017 i have been talking to people who use my book and they say quinoa doesn't agree with them a lot of people get digestive issues from quinoa believe it or not it's supposed to be the most you know bl bland and most innocuous uh, grain there is but uh, apparently it's not people have digestive issues so for this demo I decided to use oats because not too many people have problems with oats um you use mm -hmm. quick oats and I realize you can use regular oats because that's what I'm using and it and it works just as well so in the recipe it says quick cooking it could be regular as well I just want to do a PSA about oats because a lot of people don't realize that oats are grown in fields with um, glyphosate. Glyphosate is a weed killer that they just determined uh, causes cancer. It's used in a lot of the pesticides uh, like Roundup. And you would not believe all the brands that we know and love, I'm not going to name them, but most of them have these glyphosate. They won't say it on the packaging, obviously, but um, undercover research has shown that they all contain glyphosate. So I want to tell you the brand that I use. I use One Degree and it's glyphosate free they don't pay me That's anything to tell you this um it's just that i want you to be healthy and it's uh, so it is gly it's glyphosate free they're also gluten free cert certified gluten free so this I, I like these are the best one degree that what i use in my bakery it's very safe and it's very de they're delicious oats and you can be assured that you're not getting glyphosate they're glyphosate free they're gluten free so I'm just gonna pour the oats into the pan. We're gonna do everything in one pan, like your grandma used to do. Everything in one pot, you just have one pot to clean and it's that, you know, that's the best part. I'm gonna use chopped up olives for some more umami taste. And I'm going to use some raisins for sweetness because of course we want some sweetness in our new year. And then I'm just gonna pour some water and we're gonna saute our filling until the oats get mushy. And that's about, I would say three minutes, but lucky for you, I have done this ahead of time. So we don't even have to wait. I'm just showing you how I did it. And that that is our filling. And once the oats get mushy, we're going to put it in a food processor and, and get it, let them get to know each other a little better. And it's actually easier to use when you fill your your leaves. So this is what it looks like after it goes through the food processor. You don't want it too mushy. You want it to have some texture. So as you see, there is lots of texture, but it is holding together very well. And that's what you want. So this is very exciting. Um, we're almost ready to fill it. But first, I want to show you how to make the sauce because when we roll the cabbage leaves, we're gonna actually put it on top of the sauce. So we're gonna do that first. So I'm gonna grab the, the, main, the main attraction here, which is 
the apricot jam. Apricot jam is delicious. I don't know if you've ever, if you're, you know, you know, it's like, it's like a sweet and sour chicken, uh, you know, that maybe your mom used to make, but obviously we're not using chicken. Um, it's obviously no sugar. So in plant-based cooking, there's no sugar, no oil, no salt. So this is no sugar added. It's just apricots and it's very sweet. So you, you're not going to miss the apple. You're not going to miss the sweetness. So I'm, I'm just going to put it here. I'm going to, this is big enough so that I could actually put everything. I could actually take this out, but um, let's see. Maybe I should take some of this out. We'll pretend that it's all ready to go. I have enough room. So we're going to just put this, like I said, we're going to do everything in one pot. You only have one pot to clean. Okay, and then we're going to add in the rest of the ingredients. Let's see if you can see this. Okay, then we're using some spicy mustard. Like that. Any 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 mustard will do. This is a this is a spicy mustard. Of course, I'm using a dainty spoon because we're using jam. We're going to put in some more coconut aminos. To loosen up the liquid here and then what makes this a Moroccan recipe is the spices so I'm using some ginger some garlic and cumin I I'm using um powdered but you can use you could use fresh ginger you could use fresh garlic it, that's the way it's written the recipe but here I'm just using the powder form it, it it's just as good and the jam is, uh, the sauce is already made. And also I add some green tea. Sometimes I use water. Uh, I like the, I like the, it's a very earthy taste. I use matcha usually, um, but if you're eating at night, you may not want the caffeine. So just use water. I'm gonna use water here. And eventually the sauce is, it's just, it's gonna thicken up because there's pectin in the apricot jam and it's gonna thicken up. And then when you put, I'll show you, when you put your rolls in throughout the cooking process, which is only 15 minutes, by the way, you're just gonna cover the, you know, you're just gonna keep pouring it over the rolls so that it gets, you know, you want it all to have that sweet, yummy flavor and sauce. So I'm going to show you how to roll your, your cabbage rolls. I'm gonna put this aside here for just one second. I wanna show you how to do this. Okay, really so we have- We had someone ask um, if they don't like mustard, could they substitute or omit that? What, what do they wanna to substitute? Uh, the mustard in the sauce. And what do they wanna use instead? They just don't like mustard. <laughs> oh, 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 you, well, um, you, you can. Um, you can absolutely substitute it, but I would find something else, like maybe horseradish. You want because the apricot itself is just going to be too sweet. So you want to have an like a, an umami, uh, something to bring it together, so that you have like a sweet and sour. So um, you know, off the top of my head, I'm thinking of horseradish, but there must be other things that you could use. Maybe some more coconut aminos. Um, you know, instead I do add coconut amino, so you are getting a little salty. So maybe you don't have to substitute the uh, mustard, but um, yeah, but think about what you may like. And then that, you know, that has that salty taste and then maybe substitute that. If not, just add a little bit more coconut aminos or soy sauce or tamari, whatever you use. So I've just laid out my first cabbage leaf here. Let's see if you could see that. Okay, and I'm going to take the softer part and put it towards me. And I'm going to take maybe two tablespoons of the filling, not too much, because you don't want it to fall out. And I'm just going to put it at the tip of the leaf closest to me. Then you're going to roll, you cover it and you roll 
the cabbage. And as you're rolling, fold in both sides and you're like you're making a burrito and keep folding and rolling, folding and rolling. And then you get, that's the seam and that's the roll. And put this seam side down in your pan that's cooking the, oh, let me show you, let's go back here. That's cooking the jam, that's cooking the sauce, okay? And we're just gonna keep going. So see, look at that. Look how it just falls away. It's like magic. <laughs> and we're just gonna keep going. The same thing. We're gonna take two tablespoons from our already food processed filling. Sort of squeeze it together, put it at the base and roll, fold and roll like a burrito. And just keep going until you use all your leaves. So you're gonna get a lot of, you're gonna get a lot of stuffed cabbage out of this. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I hope you have a big family or hope you have a lot of friends because it's gonna be a lot, but it does last for quite a while in the fridge. If you don't, you know, if you don't use it all one night, that's fine. There's nothing in it that could spoil. And we're going to heat this and keep it warm for 15 minutes. And then uh, as I said, what you're gonna do is you're gonna, you know, you know, every few minutes, look at it and just take some of the sauce and go over like that. Just keep basting. You're gonna keep basting the rolls like that. Just let it be. And you will have, after 15 minutes, you will have these delicious Moroccan stuffed cabbage rolls. These are already cooked. And let me see if I could find, okay, we're gonna dig in. Normally I wouldn't be eating these at 10 in the morning, but <laughs> I'll just make an exception. <laughs> Where are you located? I'm in Los Angeles, California. Very nice. Okay. And okay. Let's see if I could show you the inside. Oh, my, my dog just visited me because he's... <laughs> See, I don't know if you can see the ins. That's the inside. Whoops, that's the inside. So it, it nice. Yeah. So yeah. So as you can see, it's a very easy dish to make. And let's just. Oh my goodness. Well, you know, food tastes better when you hold it with your hands. That's my motto. Mmm. Mmm. Jealous. Mmm. 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 So good. It looks so good. Yeah, it's everything you would want in stuffed cabbage. It's so good, sweet. Like I said, there's some umami. It goes together so well with the oats because you get a lot of crunch with the with the cabbage, but then you get that soft filling with the um with the oats. You can also, you know, if you don't like oats, you can use stuffing. Just regular bread stuffing is good. Mm -hmm. Rice. Yeah, like there's a lot of possibilities. Yeah. I mean, it's um, endless. If someone wanted to like make the little cabbage rolls ahead of time and then like cook them the next day, is that something they could do? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Once you make them, just put them in the fridge and then just cook them the next day with the sauce. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Um, we've had a couple other questions about the recipe itself. Um, someone can't have olives. Uh, could they go with those umami suggestions you made earlier or is there something else? Yeah, you don't have to put in the olives. I just do that to balance the sweetness because there are raisins in it. So yeah, you could just do something else that you do like or leave them out and you'll just have a sweeter, filling that's okay 
great. Uh, they also want to know, I don't know if the jam you used was kosher, but um, is there a kosher no sugar added apricot jam you know of? Uh, I think all jams are, co I mean, if you go to any grocery store, you, you're pretty much going to find that they're all kosher. Um, <laughs> so that's not a problem, I don't think. Um, shoo, I, you know, the jar I used is not with me right now. I threw it away, so I can't. It's it's a weird brand anyway. You probably wouldn't be able to find it. But if you go on Amazon, you can look up sugar-free apricot jam. And I assure you, you will find a kosher sugar-free uh, apricot jam. It's, it's very common. Like okay. now people are so aware of sugar that mm -hmm. you will have no problem. Okay, good, good to know. Um, the last question from uh, Myrna was, where do you buy the one degree oats? So I personally can find them at, um, it's called natural market and also just whole foods, but where do you find them? I buy them online. Okay. I get them online because I get them in very big uh, right. bags. So I just buy them online on Amazon and you could do that too. Just, to, you know, just so you're not going from one store to the other. Oh, they don't have it. I have to go to another <laughs> yeah. store. You don't want to waste your time. Just have it delivered straight to your door. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, that was it from that one question. Does anyone have any other questions while we're here? If not, I have um, a few questions that I want to know. Um, you know, what can you tell us about what inspired you to go plant based? Well, you know, there were two di different variations of what I did. First of all, it starts way back when I was young, you know, my grandfather was a kosher butcher. My parents always had meat in the house and I never really liked it, the taste of meat. So that was like the first indication that that meat wasn't for me. That was just a, a personal preference. But as I got older, I learned about the health benefits of being vegan. I didn't know about plant-based till later. Um, so in college, I just went vegan and I knew it, it was more for the health benefits. And also because I didn't like meat. So it was just the combination. Then in 2015, I went to the um, natural, it was the plant-based uh, uh, healthcare conference with Dr. T. Colin Campbell, because he had written the book, The China Study, which I had read. And uh, so he's the founding father of the plant-based movement. And um, that conference changed how I felt about oil, because I was using oil. I was sauteing with oil. I was using it in salad dressings. And so that conference inspired me to go plant-based, which just meant eliminating the salt, oil, and sugar, because they explained how the refined oils clog our arteries, just like cholesterol would. And I thought, yeah, who wants that? And then they talked about how to replace the oil with if you want to saute something, use vegetable broth, use carrot juice, use water. I was like, oh my God, that's like, that's brilliant. And so 2015, I went plant-based and that was, that was it. That's, that's, that's been my journey ever since. Very nice. Thanks for sharing. Um, what inspired you to start uh, Sweet Debbie's? Well, um, I was hungry uh, back in 2006. <laughs> And I wanted a cupcake and I wanted uh, something that didn't have sugar. Uh, back in 2006, that didn't exist. Um, they had things with sucralose, but the, that's poison. So I said, no, I'm not gonna have, you know, have that. So I decided that I was going to figure it out, which I was not a baker at the time. I didn't really, you know, I wasn't trained by any means, but I was desperate for a cupcake with no sugar. So I did that. I went home and I tried to use different things and I, I figured it out and um, people said, it's so good, I should open up a bakery, which I did in 2006. It was called Sweet Debbie's Organic Cupcakes and and it exploded. I mean, it, I wasn't the only one wanting sugar-free stuff that was healthy. Um, and it just went from there. I mean, once you see that there's a demand for what you're doing, you're just like, okay, we're, let's do it. And so I added, brownies and and cookies and donut holes and then my son was born in 2008 
with severe food allergies. At, I mean, like to everything, to, to, to dairy, to eggs, to nuts, to seeds, to flaxseed. And I had to go, I had to make my bakery uh, allergy free as well as vegan. So um, it was a very big transition, but then business got even busier because a lot of kids had those same allergies. And, uh, and, and so I did that, uh, you know, for the, you know, the last 18 years. Um, and then recently, I guess it was the pandemic sort of stopped things for a while. And then I decided to do uh, granola because it's easy to ship. And that was uh, something that I was passionate about. And I was doing some research and a lot of people love granola and, um, uh, there are other things coming down the pike too, but that that's all I do right now is the Sweet Debbie's granola with superpowers, by the way. <laughs> what do you mean by superpowers? So the superpowers are the super superfoods that we use to infuse the uh, granola with flavor, with extra health benefits. And each flavor, we have nine of them right now that have different superfoods that give you different superpowers. So depending on what you like and depending on um, you know, how you want to feed your body and you know, what you think you need, whether it's you know, better gut health or maybe more collagen, uh, ve you know, I use vegan collagen, um, that might be something you would want, to, you know, depending on what flavor you like. So you have to see the bag and see which, which superfood is in which flavor. Definitely. Um, so we actually got another question. Oh, we have two more questions about the recipe. <laughs> um, how long can the prepared cabbage rolls keep in the fridge and have you ever frozen them? I, I have kept them in the fridge for at least seven days and they're really good. They actually get better with age, unlike uh, me. No, uh, unlike uh, most foods that are vegan, you can keep it in the in in the fridge for about a week so like it tastes better i'm telling you when when it's marinating in the sauce it's so delicious so you know, like it gets better as you keep it um i've never frozen them you know it just we eat it too quickly so there's no need so i don't know how it would do um in the freezer um i mean you could try it maybe with one roll and see how it does mm -hmm. i'm not you know i'm not sure that's yeah. that's a good question Maybe they could freeze just the stuffing and then let that yeah. thaw something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, you know, I, I really don't know. I mean, I'm not sure how cabbage. Um, what I'm more worried about is the the leaf of the yeah, cabbage yeah. probably wilts a lot because then you're you're freezing and then you're um, defrosting it. It might it might get very wilty, but you know maybe that's okay. Thank you. Um, and then someone asked, can we skip the food processor and just have like a coarser stuffing? Yeah, absolutely. You don't have to, you know, uh, you don't have to um, get it to be, you know, a mush. You can definitely, if it holds together well, I mean, the only because you don't want to have it like falling out when you cut it open. But yeah, if you could get like a rice or something that would sort of bind together um, at you know, when you, when you put it in the cabbage roll, then absolutely, you can skip the food processor. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so you talked a lot about, you know, um, that it's important for you to make stuff that's allergy free, but also nutritious. Um, so like, how do you kind of go about creating a new recipe and making it also taste really good? Well, there are, are several things that you want to have nutritionally. Um, you want to have the healthy fats like avocado and nuts and seeds. You want to have complex carbs like sweet potatoes and and brown rice and quinoa. You want to have the um, the vitamins and minerals like you get in cruciferous or you know uh, leafy greens. You want to have a little protein. I mean, everything has protein. That's something that a lot of people don't realize. Most uh, actually every single thing we eat has protein, even blueberries, even, you know, cabbage. Um, but if you want like that extra protein, you, you know, you're thinking tempeh, tofu, uh, uh, chickpeas, you know, things like that. 
and you want to sort of put that all together and you have a really good mix of the nutrition that uh, you know that you're looking for and then taste wise you want to add things like fresh herbs fresh spices like you know dill and cilantro you know cilantro is controversial but I'm a converted cilantro lover. I did not like cilantro until I actually went to a farm and picked it myself. And then it was just so fragrant. I was, um, I was a cilantro believer. Um, so you maybe want to, if you don't like cilantro, maybe you want to go to a farm and get it or the farmer's market because in the store, it's not as good. Um, so herbs and spices that are fresh. And then you want to add like um, something very, very, um, bright like like a squeeze of lemon juice squeeze of lime a little vinegar um and then of course the umami uh that i talked about before which is maybe miso maybe sun-dried tomatoes and then you just play with it depending on what you're making you know you combine these various factors and then you have something very delicious thank you i wonder if um you, you mentioned about the cilantro not liking it until you had it fresh picked from a farm. Like, I wonder if that goes for most foods. I wonder if like, if we all tried foods we didn't like fresh picked from a farm, we, we would like them. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I, I totally agree. I mean, we're not all privy to having a farm in our backyard, of course, but you know, if you can drive an hour um, like on a Sunday and see, you know, go to a farm and, and you know, check it out, uh, you'll you'll probably agree. Definitely. Well, you're lucky to be in California. I mean, I'm in Arizona, and well, there's there's certain stuff that you can get farmed here, but definitely yeah. not as good as California. But um, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, do you have any upcoming projects or anything that you want to share with us? Well, I like I said, um, the the granola company is going on. It's at sweetdebbies.com. Uh, I do have a special thing coming up. Um, we're going to release granola rolls. Um, they're not like cabbage rolls, but um, <laughs> it's something that when I show, you know, when I show a, even just a picture of it to people, they're like, their eyes pop out of their head. They just can't believe it looks, it's amazing. Um, that So that's coming up next month. So you want to look out for that because that's going to be um, a new product that Sweet Debbie's will be releasing. And I think everybody's going to love that. In addition to the granola, which is very, uh, very delicious. And I, you know, I do farmer's markets and I get feedback right away. And people say it's like the best granola they've ever had. Uh, and that's, you know, that says a lot because there's a lot of granola out there. So um, like, and even my granola doesn't have any oil, sugar or, or, or salt. So, um, so that, that's a, a, you know, that keeps me going is, you know, the good feedback. Yeah, that's super exciting. Um, I will say I'm also SOS free and it is very hard to find granola without oil in it. It's just yep. like, oh my gosh, like, come on guys. <laughs> yep, I know. All right, well, um, thank you so much, Debbie, and uh, for your, just the cooking demo, but then also for these little tips and um, information throughout it was really great to be here with everyone. Um, again, I put the links for Debbie's website, sweetdebbies.com, and also Shemayam website in the chat. Those links will also be wherever this video is posted afterwards. Thank you all so much for being here and uh, have a beautiful Rosh Hashanah and high holiday season.